Russ Brialt, and I'm a lifelong lecturer and researcher on the Shroud of Turin, which is believed by millions to be the actual burial shroud that wrapped Jesus when he was in the tomb some 2,000 years ago. When I was growing up, um, I didn't come out of a religious home. My dad, in fact, was a professing atheist. And by the time I came along, the sermon I heard growing up was, son, there is no God. Religion is fine for those who need it, but I see it as nothing more than a crutch for the weak. And the uh, first 23 years of my life, I had adopted my dad's atheism. Obviously, God had other plans for my life. I stumbled across a paperback version of the New Testament, and I was interested because I didn't know anything about Jesus. I was intrigued. And so uh, I came to faith through a Bible that I stole <laughs> from a hotel room. There came a point in time where I realized that Jesus was real but I knew he was not in me, but I knew he could be, because I had a friend of mine back in high school. He gave me all these Bible tracts, and I knew that there was a prayer in there that I could say, that I could ask Jesus into my life, and, and I said that prayer over and over and over again. And as God is my witness, on the morning of the fourth day, I woke up that morning and I felt like everything had changed, everything. It was about a year after I became a believer that I learned that there was a team of 33 scientists traveling to Turin, Italy to analyze a religious artifact, an artifact that purported to be the burial shroud of Jesus. And I was excited about that possibility. It was in 1980, I was a writer for the college newspaper. So I asked if I could write a couple articles about it and they gave me permission to do it. And by the time I'd done all of this research to write the articles, I was hooked. I never went to school for the Shroud, but I can guarantee you I have a PhD in it. I have presented hundreds upon hundreds of presentations that I brand Shroud Encounter, and I probably lectured at over 80 colleges and universities and well over a thousand churches uh, from Maine to Hawaii and all through Canada. And there are so many people for whom the Christian faith is nebulous and vague and they've, they've heard the Bible stories and they've gone to school and, and they've been beaten down in their faith and they're questioning whether any of this is real. And the Shroud makes it real. And that's why I've been doing this for 40 plus years. It really is an exhilarating thing when you know that someone has placed their faith in Christ because of something you said or something you did. I know how important faith is. It drives every aspect of, of who I am. It's integrated into every part of the fabric of my life. And so I know how it can be transforming. And so it's exciting when someone comes to that same place of faith. I think the Shroud is far more than a mystery. It is a marvelous presentation of Christ himself. The Shroud is a burial shroud that has wrapped a corpse. It's 14 feet long, three and a half feet wide, so it's a long, narrow cloth made out of flax. This cloth bears the faint image of a bearded, crucified man, about five foot 10 in height. He bears all the same wounds as uh, what uh, Jesus sustained, a crown of thorns all around the head from we see uh, blood flows and we see scourging all across the back, about a, at least 120 scourge marks on the body from the base of the neck all the way down to the ankles. We see the nail wounds in the wrist. We see the nail wounds in the feet. And we see a side wound that occurred after he was dead because we know that it's post-mortem blood flow, blood that flowed after death because there's a clear separation of blood and blood serum. So all the wounds that that were unique to the crucifixion of Jesus are all evident on this cloth. 
There was a fire in 1532, and a glob of molten silver fell down onto it, burning all the way through it, creating a series of eight burns, and were subsequently uh, patched up with patches in 1534. So the image seems to lie in between those two parallel lines. It was a complete miracle that the shroud was not completely incinerated. So the question, of course, for the ages is, you know, could this be the authentic Burroughs Shroud of Jesus, or is it nothing more than just an elaborate medieval hoax? Well, the Shroud in 1978 was subjected to uh, a battery of scientific tests at the hands of 33 American scientists who went there and had access to it for five days and nights. They worked around the clock 120 hours to answer one question. What is the cause of the image? And we still don't know. It remains a mystery. So the whole pattern of bloodstains speaks to the crucifixion. But the image, the image speaks to something else. The image penetrates only the top one to two microfibers of the cloth. Now each individual thread is made up of about 200 microfibers. So this image affects only the top 1% of the cloth. It does not penetrate through to the other side. And so what is this process? Some people speculate, as I do too, that maybe that's the result of the resurrection itself. One of the beautiful things about the shroud is that it goes to the very bullseye of the Christian faith. And it does the very same thing that all four gospels do. They testify to the life, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And that's exactly what the shroud does. We were created by God in his image and in his likeness to serve a purpose. And our job is to find out what that purpose is. You know, once you know something is true, you want to share that truth with others. And really that became my purpose, is sharing the truth of Christ through the shroud. I go around the country and I do these shroud encounters, but it's, it's my goal that every shroud encounter become a Christ encounter. And to me, the shroud leads people straight to Christ himself. And that's always been my purpose, ever since I first learned about it. And it remains my purpose even to this day. <laughs>